Hello and welcome back to Gospel Gems, the series where we want to present something of the glorious gospel of Christ in a short form video. This week we are concluding our three week study of Luke's Gospel in chapter 15. In our first installment we considered the lost sheep, noting how there in a shepherd we see a lovely picture of the good shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ. Last week we considered the lost silver, and we saw there a picture of the work of the Holy Spirit in bringing us all to conviction of sin and of the righteousness of God. Well, this week we want to consider the lost son. So for our reading, let's go to Luke 15. And again, we will start by reading those first two verses that really set the context. Luke 15 and verse one. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. Let us now go down to verse 11 to read today's section of the parable. Luke 15 verse 11, And he, that is the Lord Jesus, said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me and he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he had come to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat, and be merry. For this my son was dead, and is alive again, he was lost, and is found, and they began to be merry. Now his old elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing, and he called one of the servants, and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry, and would not go in. Therefore came his father out, and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, Neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou hast never given, uh, gavest me a kid, that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry, and be glad. For this thy brother was dead, and is alive again, and was lost, and is found. And we look to God to bless the reading of his most precious word. Now to consider this section of the parable, I want to hinge my thoughts on four headings. I want to consider the lost son and his folly, the lost son and his fall, the lost son and his father, and the lost son and his family. So a lot to get through, but we shall try 
and keep our points concise. So firstly, the son and his folly. Assuming that you are familiar with this section of the parable, you will know the basic background. Here in this part of the parable, we are presented with a certain man that had two sons, the younger of whom came to his father asking for the portion of his inheritance. Coincidentally, I read an article the other day that suggested that for the average person in the UK to get onto the property ladder, he really needs an inheritance. But alas, I tried asking my parents and they turned me down. But nevertheless, coming back to the parable, we have this younger son who asks his father for the portion of his inheritance and the father, he divides his living. Now notice what then happens, verse 13. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. This is what I want to term his folly. You see, he had left the place of safety and security wherever every need that he ever had had been met. And instead he left it all to get into the world and to there waste it all on riotous living, on an extravagant and a worldly lifestyle full of sensual pleasures. In fact, we read, didn't we, that the elder son, he later on says to his father that the younger son had devoured thy living with harlots, that is to say, prostitutes. You know, we live in a world today that really tries to suck you in with all its pleasures. It presents it as something that is appealing, something that you want, something that you need. And perhaps it is, friend, that you brought into it. Well, let's be clear that the world is a stinking cesspit of sin. Take a look at this younger son and notice his position relative to the father. Firstly, he is in a far country. And secondly, as far as the father was concerned, it was as though he were dead. We learn that from verse 24. And so you say, well, what's the picture to see here? What are we to learn from this part of the parable? Well, I suggest it is, again, another picture of you and I in our sin. In fact, what I really see here is a picture of the fall of man, as recorded for us in Genesis in chapter 3. You see there in the beginning, you have Adam and his wife Eve there in their garden. That which God has said was very good, and there in the garden they have dominion over creation. They have the perfect and bountiful provision in that they have been told by God that of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. There was just but one condition that uh, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. So there in the beginning man had every need met. And they had communion with God. And yet, chapter 3, and read how the serpent comes into the garden, adds to the word of God, takes from the word of God, twists the word of God, and as a result, when the woman, verse 6, saw that the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat. And gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Oh, friend, you see, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, it looked good. It looked attractive, but it caused mankind to be driven out of the garden. It brought in separation, and that from God. And friend, that is really the source. And as a result, the Bible tells us in Romans in chapter 5 and verse 12, Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Friend, in our sin, as far as God is concerned, we are, to use the language of the Ephesians in chapter 2, we are aliens, strangers, having no hope, 
and without God in the world, we are afar off. In fact, the situation is so hopeless that as far as God is concerned, we are dead in trespasses and sins. You see how we see this pictured in the parable? The position of the son relative to the father, afar off, as though he were dead, a picture of you and I, and the separation that sin has brought, so that we are afar off from God, aliens, strangers, having no hope, dead in trespasses and sins. You see, therefore, the consequences of the folly of the son. It brought in separation. Well, we want to move on to now consider the son and his fall. Really what I want to bring out here is the son and his fall to rock bottom. What I want to bring out is the point at which the younger son, he comes to a realization of self. He gets a grip of the seriousness of the situation and he sees what he has done and for what it is. You will notice that it is when he had spent all, when he began to be in want. That's what we read in verse 16, how, how low he had come. He would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him. You know, sometimes it is true that for a man or a woman to really come to their senses, they need to hit rock bottom. The scriptures teach us in 2 Corinthians in chapter 4 and verse 4 that the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. You see, one of the tools that Satan uses to keep people from coming to the truth, to keep people from coming to the Lord Jesus Christ, is materialism and worldly goods. You know, perhaps that is sadly the reason why there's very few rich people that trust Christ for salvation. Says the Lord Jesus in Luke chapter 18 and verse 25, For it is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Why? Because people love this world's goods more than they love Christ. They set a greater desire and a greater emphasis on this world's goods than on getting right with God. You know, there is a warning given in Mark chapter 8 and verse 36. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Well, for this younger son, he's been stripped of everything. He's come right down to rock bottom. And in this desperate situation, the desperate position that he finds himself in, he came to himself, verse 17, and he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. You know, I tell you that this man, this younger son, he was repentant. He didn't seek to justify himself. He knew what his sin meant. And he realized his own unworthiness. And friend, it is in that spirit of repentance that he went to his father. And if we are ever to get right with God, then that is how we too must come. In realizing our sin for what it is. Realizing how it has separated us from God. And in that spirit, coming lowly before God. So, we've thought of the son and his folly. We've thought of the son and his fall. Now we want to think of the son and his father. You know, I don't think it's reading between the lines too much to suggest that even though this son was afar off, 
even though as far as the, as the father was concerned, it was as though he were dead, the father had not stopped loving him. Nor had the father stopped searching for him. Well, you say, how do you know? Well, verse 20, we read that, And when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him. I take it therefore that the father was coming out away from the home and into the fields, perhaps on a daily basis, wondering, is this the day when my son will return? He was out. He was searching. He was longing for his son to come back. You know, as we said in our first installment of this series, through this parable we are presented with pictures. A picture of the Lord Jesus in the Good Shepherd. A picture of the work of the, in the Holy Spirit, of the Holy Spirit in the search for the lost silver. And here, in this section of the parable, we have a picture of God the Father. You see, the Bible tells us that God is love. A fact that is awesome and can never really be comprehended. Consider that great gospel text, John, John's Gospel in chapter 3 and verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now as the Father comes out to his Son in like manner, God has come into this world in the person of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Timothy in chapter 3 and verse 16 says this, God was manifest in the flesh. You know, the Lord Jesus was truly God. Says the Lord Jesus in John 14 and verse 9, He that has seen me has seen the Father. He shared in all his character. You see, the Lord Jesus, he is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners. And he was the one and the only one who could deal with the problem of your sin and mine. And so he came. God was manifest in flesh. He came into this world, became a real man, to die in our stead on the cross of Calvary. To make a way possible so that we can be reconciled to God to make a way possible a way back to God from the dark path of sin what love you know there is a lovely hymn that says this God loved the world of sinners lost and ruined by the fall salvation full at highest cost he offers free to all oh twas love twas wondrous love the love of God to me it brought my saviour from above to die on calvary well come back to the parable and notice the way that the father receives the son he had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him you know, before the son ever had time to finish his sentence about how he was no longer worthy to be called his son, about how he wanted to be one of his highest servants, the father interrupts him and says this to his servants, bring forth the best robe. Put a ring on his hand, shoes on his feet, bring hither the fatted calf and let us eat and be merry. Friend, such is the heart of God the father. Hebrews in chapter 10 and verse 17 says this, And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Psalm 103 and verse 12 says this, As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. So God the Father, he forgives us. And not only does he forgive us, he puts as it were on us the best robe. Isaiah in chapter 61 and verse 10 says this, God hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with a robe of righteousness. God has put, a, as it were, on our hands 
our outing. You see, we have renewed relationship with God. Galatians in chapter 4 verses 5 says this, that we might receive the adoption of sons. We have new shoes on our feet. We have a new walk. And the, the fatted calf, as it were, has been brought forth. That which speaks of satisfaction, that which it speaks of rejoicing. Such is the awesome grace of God, and it can be yours if you repent and trust Him, the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, time is gone. However, I want to consider in closing the Son and His family. In particular, I want to consider his older brother. You see, when he found out what was going on, he was angry and would not go in. In speaking to his father, he lists out what he has done. The many years of service, the fact that he had not transgressed at any time his father's commandments, and so on. But notice where he is standing. He refused to go in. Instead, of going into where there is rejoicing and where there is bounty, he stays out. He's not in, he's out. And I suggest here we have the lesson that the Lord Jesus is making to the scribes and the Pharisees of verse 1 and 2. Those that were murmuring, saying that this man, the Lord Jesus, receiveth sinners and eateth with them. Here it is a lesson for the scribes and the Pharisees. You see, the scribes and the Pharisees, they thought that they were good. They, they prided themselves on their upright living, on all their giving, and all these things that looked good. But it was just that. It was just a look. It was vain and an empty facade. And instead, they had rejected the Lord Jesus. And so, friend, they were not in where there was joy and where there was rejoicing, rather they were out. May that be a warning to anyone watching that thinks themselves good, that looks down on others, that says they're not like them, the, the lowest in society. May that be a warning. Perhaps it is today that you are priding yourselves on your good work. On your religious attendance. On your charitable giving. Whatever it might be. If you are resting on that today. May this be a warning to you. That unless you have come. Through the door that is Christ. Then you are out. You're not in. You don't know peace with God. You don't know sins forgiven. You don't know heaven as your home. You see the Bible tells us that we've all sinned. And unless you have trusted Christ for salvation, you're out. You can't enter into all the joy, all the rejoicing, all the blessings that are laid up for those that love the Lord Jesus Christ as their own and personal Savior. So may this be a warning the older son, he refused to go in. He thought himself to be good. He looked down on his younger brother and his riotous living that had formerly marked him. But it was the younger son who recognized his sin, who came back to the father, who was received by the father and brought into blessing as a result. The older son, he thought himself to be good. But he refused to go into where the blessing was. He stayed outside. That is the lesson to the scribes and the Pharisees. And to anyone watching that is in that position. Humble yourself. Recognize your sin for what it is to God. Recognize that the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one and the only one who can deal with your sin. He is the way back to God from the dark paths of sin. Friend, there is a door that is open that you may go in at Calvary's cross. It's where you begin when you come as a sinner to Jesus. Thanks for watching. We trust indeed that God will be pleased to add his blessing upon this consideration of his 
most precious word. Well, this concludes our three weeks consideration of Luke's Gospel in chapter 15. God willing, in the future we do hope to make more Gospel Gems, more short form videos. But uh, over the next few weeks there's going to be a little pause, but there is plenty of materials that you can find on our website www.upperhillstreet.org. There's many audio and video messages that you can listen to at your leisure on there. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit that bell icon so that you are notified when we do make new uploads. And God willing, Gospel Gems will be back later on in the summer. So until next time, thanks for watching and may God bless you.